one would have been returned. And everybody's going to ask me why. Why? <laughs> because the absentee ballot envelopes had no return address. Exactly. Oh. So when you have the absentee ballots that were sent out to people to vote, the return uh, envelope had no address on it, and there was no instruction on where to return the absentee ballot. So therefore, there is a real question with regard to the propriety of any absentee ballots being declared valid because the district clerk and the Hempstead School District, who had the responsibility of making sure that this was a treasured process, failed to live up to their obligation. And that's one of the questions that we need the court to take a look at. I mean, is it possible that they could look at these absentee, or, uh, in other words, are there some number currently of absentee ball ballots that are uncounted, whether they're legitimate or not? Like, are there some ballots that are not reflected in these numbers that could change the results of the election? We understand that by determination of the district, by the clerk and all those present during the counting, that there were approximately 65, 66 ballots which were thrown out as being invalid completely. In other words, the clerk making the determination as the administrative agent to make that determination agreed to throw those out. So does that mean 501, let's say, minus that number 66? No, that 66 is not in the count. Okay. So answering your question, those may be in controversy, but in order, and just so you know, in order for those to be overturned by a judge, the judge must find that the determination made by the clerk was arbitrary and capricious and contrary to law. Indeed, she was acting according to law and was not arbitrary nor capricious as there was an agreement by the individuals present in that, in that room that those 66 should not be counted. What is taking place here is a boondoggle in an attempt to try and once again create a, a, a dialogue where there should be no dialogue. This campaign and this election is over. I will let you know that this morning these candidates filed with the district clerk and I will provide you copies their oath of office signed and notarized. It has been received and clocked in and if you'd like to see that from the press would you raise your hand? That's unanimous. Motion carries. <laughs> <laughs> So, are they contesting the election? Is it, is it done deal? Is we have a done deal. As from the standpoint of these candidates and these ca these, this campaign, that th this is a done deal. And the law. And the law. This is a done deal. If indeed they want to go to a court to raise issues about the validity of the, of the, the campaign, the only thing that could happen is that the persons who are the complainants in that situation would become subject to investigation which may very require Ms. Rice, who's running for Congress, to evaluate this and the State Board of Elections to evaluate this. Because if there were an additional 301 votes, aside from the 231, something stinks and it ain't Lindberger cheese. <laughs> Other questions? Can you tell me by law or where in statute is it illegal for, um, I'm already forgetting her name, for Betty Cross? To take the uh, action that she did on that screen when she wanted to have a vote, could you tell me where in the code is that? Is that in fact illegal for her to take that action? One of the reasons why we w we refer to it as being unlawful is because she had a conflict of interest. But is that illegal? It it, it is if indeed a uh, a, a municipal. Um, uh, no, I mean, for the municipal uh, uh, individual, an individual who is an elected official, is voting on something for her own benefit. And if that were the case, there were only three school board persons there. She should have recused herself. Therefore, there would have been no uh, quorum, and then they, that action is illegal. So that's how we're looking at it as being inappropriate. But indeed, the fact that they chose to, to make a motion till, till today, come 12 o'clock midnight tonight, if they haven't done what they're supposed to do, shame on them. Just so you know, the budget did pass the, yesterday. It was uh, 800, as it was into one, uh, 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 yeah, but it was, uh, the total, the total budget is $184 million. 
these two candidates throughout the campaign have been taking board member classes. They have gone for classes with regard to finance, with regard to budgeting, with regard to uh, a campaign law. But one of the things that's pretty clear is they do not stand alone. They stand with and for a community. And one of the things that they have stated throughout this campaign is that they don't expect to come in and change things around overnight. This culture was not created overnight, and this culture will not be undone overnight. 30 years of neglect mm. require some attention mm. and some planning. And we're calling on those persons that did run for school board and the other people to come, because this is a first step for a path forward. Healing is necessary in Hempstead. Healing is necessary for the children of Hempstead. And working together, those individuals that had some very good ideas in the campaign should come forward and join the, the, the process of making Hempstead the, the, the stellar district that it should be. Because there's no reason why every time you hear the word Hempstead School District, somebody sucks their teeth or wants to push away from the table. They should want to pull up and say, please, tell me more. And that's what we're, we're looking for from everybody in the community to come together. Well, one of the most pressing scandals, of course, is the grade fixing uh, or the grade changing allegations that Newsday's reported on. The state has come down hard and said a couple thousand grades were changed from failing to passing. Only 8% could be accounted for, meaning 92% were per perhaps arbitrarily changed. I don't know that you need to be an expert to, to make it, you know, to change that. How that's a re very, very serious, immediate problem that will put children potentially out in the world unprepared for what's next. How could you, as a board member, try and undo that, whatever system that was created to allow that to happen? And, uh, and I'll pass it down to them, but aside from well, attempting to speak to the Commissioner of Education to find out what the scope of their investigation will be, they are not yet sworn, mm -hmm. and therefore they don't have the authority to do anything. But once they're in, I'm sure speaking to the Commissioner to find out what approach the Commissioner plans to take, because there is no intent concerning anyone in this room to interfere with an investigation. Mm -hmm. If the DA or the U.S. Attorney is investigating this, as they might, in light of the fact that educational funds are involved, mm -hmm. federal funds are involved, mm -hmm. these two candidates I know stand ready to try and remedy that, but I'll let them address it. We, it's going to be a big package that we are coming to, to face when we come to the board, and of course we are going to have to sit down not only with the school officials but also with the um, state education department because if this is not overnight and this investigation mm, was not one day investigation so we are going to have to sit down with them and come up with uh, some solutions because not only was a, as a community but especially for me as a mother my son was in that high school at those on those years so it's very important for our community to know and to solve these problems. We are all losing on this, but we are all having a lot to do to win on this. And I think this is it, it's hard for me to give you a, a, an answer what we are going to do as soon as we get there. But listen a lot and learn a lot. As most of you know, I grew up here in Hempstead. And when I was growing up here in Hempstead, your neighbors had the authority to whoop your butt. And I bring that to your attention simply because it's happened to me more than once. And when I got home, I thought that my mother was going to be on my side. But what my mother did is she turned around and whooped my butt again and she <laughs> said, what did you do? And the reason that I'm sharing the story with you is because my mother knew who I was. My mother knew what was going on in her house. She knew her son. We need to know what's going on in our house in terms of the school district. If we don't understand, if we don't know that these policies or pretend not to know that these policies exist, then we need to get smacked. So what I'm saying to you is I think that the first thing we need to do is pay attention. We need to open our eyes and find out what's going on. And I think if we do that, we'll be fine. Uh, but other than that, we, we leave it to the, the, the legal ease to take care of what they need to take care of, but we definitely need to know what's going on in our own house. And just to finish your question, I think Sergio wanted to comment on it is also but just to finish your question, is that in order to figure out what's hidden, because so much may have been hidden in the past, there's going to be an awful lot of uncovering that has to take place over the next year or more. 
in order to get this right. There has been a atmosphere of fear of everybody that comes to work in Hempstead and that's got to cease. Mm -hmm. You can't be a good educator, you can't be a good budget person, you can't be a good administrator coming to work fearful that you're going to be faced with retribution for doing your job. And part of the job that people are being called on, and I hope News 12 and everybody else will cover this, we are, TCC and NYCC, is calling on every educator, every paraprofessional, every administrator that knows of any illegal action which took place to come forward and cleanse their souls <laughs> and tell the truth so that this district is not faced with concerns as we go forward. There should be no more concerns about fear. Fear is not how these school board representatives and these trustees plan to operate. They, have, they ran on trust, they ran on respect, and that's what we expect to happen when they come in, that Hempstead can start getting a little bit more respect. Ladies and gentlemen, the grade inflation is just the tip of the iceberg. What we know is that exams during uh, regions and particular times of the year weren't graded. We know that there are seniors that couldn't apply for colleges because their grades from the fall semester weren't in in the spring during which time students are supposed to be applying. We know for a fact that this district has been at a 38% graduation rate not for one year but for decades. And this, this, this culture of fear in which one person or a group of individuals gets to intimidate an entire community are far and gone. You just saw a video in which the president bullied two other trustees who either, and, and, and the trustee that seconded is either incompetent or allowed herself to be bullied into doing something that should have never taken place. This is what's been happening here. We are asking everyone, everyone, security guards, parents, kids, the kids that we have heard were paid to go to the polls yesterday. The kids that were taken off of school grounds from a closed campus by the daughter of a school employee who happened to be the campaign manager and poll watcher and was literally walking the kids from the parking lot all the way to the polls. This is the kind of illegality of incompetence that will not be tolerated. And what we are talking about, we are, we are encouraging Kathleen Rice, we are encouraging U.S. Attorney's Office, and we're encouraging our own state attorney general to look into this district. What these, two, what, what these two trustees did when they went out there, one of the first things they're calling for is an internal and an external audit. We want to know where $180 million has gone over the last 30 years. And we will not stop until individuals that rob the children of their education, that rob these taxpayers of all that money, are walked out of these school buildings in handcuffs. Because it is a crime what, is, what has yes. been done here. Yes. Any other questions? I hope they use that part. <laughs> <laughs> they use it too. Hey. Yes. Fred, I have one question. Is there a reason why Maribel did not, was, was not sworn in last night and uh, taken her seat? Because of Betty, what, because what we saw in the video. Yeah, Betty Cross uh, had a vote to not certify the election and not to go forward. And those two individuals that sat there on that screen and voted in favor of it that's right need to really really be tested that's right because th that's a question that, that everybody should be raising how did you go along she had already lost at that time the numbers were in that's right her, her motion didn't even appear um second second it was second by, by no, seven motion when yeah. she made her motion uh -huh. didn't even appear to be out yes. correct right. motion yeah. and then Patricia Clark right. read it back and then used other words mm -hmm. uh, you're not supposed to yeah. I, I, okay, we're not going to we're not going to get into the technicalities <laughs> right now we know that a vote was taken a, a court's going to take a close look at it but the questions that you raise here mm -hmm. are the very questions that people have been raising for years on how that board operates and, and 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 the question that you raise of whether of impropriety the problem is that no one had the gumption or the ability to mm -hmm. stand up to her there's been a bully she's been a bully and the reality of that uh, of that concern at this point, we hopefully is going to be behind us. But that doesn't take away the history that she's created or that the district has to face. And these individuals are standing tall. They're coming in with a big cross to bear. We've got to help them. We've got to help them.